Hello again and welcome. In the last video we had charged up the AC coupling capacitor internal of the Fluke 189 and then I discharged that through a small bank of LEDs. So the question then is if this meter is in the AC volts or the AC millivolt mode if the capacitor were to be charged up so you're probing through some kind of a circuit that you're troubleshooting or something you get that capacitor charged you touch the probe on to some other device that's sensitive could you actually damage it? So for this video what I'd like to do is go a little deeper into that subject and the way we're going to do that is to have a look at the actual circuit design. So let's start off in the upper left corner. This is our input. This would be the connector to the right. This goes to a 1K resistor and a 100K ohm resistor. That's these two devices here. The one we're interested in is this 1K device. That's in series with this 1K PTC. That's this device here. And then that goes off to this red MOV, that's this device here. The other side of that goes over to this side of the 100K. And then we have these two blue mobs that are in series that go back to the common point, which is this connector here. So at this side of the PTC, we go to this node A, which goes down to this 2.6K ohm, which is in series with another 1K. You can see the two resistors here and here. The other side of that goes off to this switch and that goes to segment C and I've got that marked here. Here's B, here's C, this is B, this is C, and this would be D. These set of contacts are for the AC volt modes and these two sets are for the DC volts. So again the back side of this 1K goes to contact C and it also goes off to this 0.01 microfarad rated at 1000 volts. That's this capacitor here. The other side of the capacitor goes to contact B. And then again on the back side, our common point is D. So you could look at this as a single pole double throw switch like this where contact D is either selecting B or C. And if it's in the B mode, we are AC coupling the input, and if it's on the C mode, we're DC coupling the input. So fairly straightforward. The D contact then goes to another 100K ohm resistor, and that is this guy here. And while it looks like it's in series with this capacitor, it's not. It's actually in parallel. And that's what we've drawn here, so you can see how it kind of loops back around again. <laughs> That's the problem with drawing a schematic as you're kind of tracing out the meter. It's tough to make rhyme or reason of it. Anyway, so the common side of this goes to our resistor network, which is this guy right here. If we look at the other side of the 100K, that goes to switch contact F. And that is these two contacts here, which again, if we're looking at the meter, we're talking about these two contacts here. Now, this contact is connecting to this contact and this one connects to this one. So when the meter is set to its millivolt AC mode, the contacts go across like this and it closes these two switch contacts. When it's in the AC volt mode, those two contacts are open like this. Hopefully that shows up. So this switch is what we're talking about and this is shorting for the AC millivolt mode. If we look at contact E, that's this guy here, which goes to the other 100K ohm resistor, which again is in parallel with a small capacitor. And I think that that's this set here. That goes off to a J1. What they've done is they've configured it like so. So you could look at that as basically two back-to-back -back diodes. I mean, it's just drawn a little funky. And that is this component right here. And you can see on the back side how the two pads are connected to each other. The one side, those go off to the center of this device. This particular device is marked M5CE, which is a MMBD7000, and that's a dual diode pack, similar to what this part is. And if we look at the output of this, this goes off to the VREF 43, 
and it goes off to one of the pins of the IC and that's the small capacitor here the side going off to the common point the side going off to the one side of the bridge you can also see the center point of this going through a 1k ohm resistor and that goes into the IC and that resistor is this one right here to the right of course we wouldn't expect we're going to find any details about what's inside of that particular IC but it does appear that it has a diode drop going this direction so I believe once this capacitor is charged this is our path It's probably through here through the 200 K ohm resistors and then out through the 1K through the 2.6K and then out through the 1K PTC through the 1K into the front so my point of all this is essentially it's not like I drew it originally where we have the 1K in series with the 1.5K or 1.3 whatever I said and then going through a switch through the clamp in this meter we actually have two 100Ks in series with that plus some other resistors so the impedance would be much higher except again we have this small capacitor so as far as placing a direct short across the output these will have a fairly low impedance and I would expect that the initial current because of having those in there would be much higher now again if you watch that first part of the video when we had the meter in the AC volt mode what ended up happening is the LEDs were a little dimmer but they stayed on much longer and again what's happening here is now we're in the AC volt mode so this switch is open so what ends up happening is our path instead of going through this direction is now going through our high impedance resistive network so if it's in the AC volt mode we have a much higher impedance just in the fact that we have this network in series with all this just want to make sure that if we have any oils or anything left from our fingers we want to get rid of that again if you watch the videos where I transient tested this meter it held up very well I don't know who owned this but boy it sure didn't get treated with a lot of care alright so I have our meter back together again we're just going to select the AC millivolt mode zoom in here a little bit we'll just take this to about 600 volts let's see it's about uh, 590 and again we're going to take our input lead and we'll just attach that to the output of the high voltage supply and let's touch it to the LEDs and you can hopefully again see how that's flashing and again if we go to the AC volt mode and we charge it up you can see that the intensity is definitely lower but the LEDs remain on for a longer period of time so if we take a thousand volt and we divide that by 200 K that gives us 5 milliamps so what I'm thinking is when the meter is in the millivolt range and you switched in these two 100 K ohm resistors maybe that limits the current enough to where you wouldn't damage a device however again these are in parallel with these two capacitors of course we also have the capacitance of the MOV sitting right across the output all that could come into play when we start looking at a high frequency transient this is a small DC to DC converter and then this is a LEM current transducer here I have a low pass filter our scope is set for 5 millivolts per division see there's quite a bit of noise almost a half a division at 5 millivolts that's roughly 50 microamps per division I've got the trigger set just over the noise level let's go ahead and charge up our meter and now let's discharge it right to the chassis you can see there's definitely something there it'll trigger every now and then you're getting about maybe another half division up over the noise floor so not a lot of current again we're at a thousand volts and we said that that would be limited to about five milliamps but again this is a lot of high frequency noise my guess is the peak current's probably quite a bit higher than this and the reason that we're not seeing the transient is because I'm stepping on the high frequency so much let's just try it in the AC volt mode it's interesting so now you can see we can't even get a trigger off of it 
I'm not too surprised because again we've basically switched out these two 100 K's and we're now using the divider network so let's go ahead and we'll remove this filter and let's see what we get now oh yeah let's uh, zoom into this a little bit there you go look at that high frequency this is a uh, hundred nanoseconds per division right now so the scope is currently set for 50 millivolts per division or 500 microamps per division and now let's go ahead and charge up our cap oh and see we're about one division up so about 500 microamps peak now I'm expecting this is not going to be a nice clean switch so we're inducing a little bit of contact bounce into this you can see there's quite a bit of current involved this is my vintage Tektronix P6042 current probe you can see that this requires the oscilloscope to be set to 50 ohms we're going to set this to the highest range so one amp per division and that requires the scope be set to 50 millivolts per division so we're going to have to change this over use 50 ohms and let's just remove our 20 megahertz bandwidth we'll just set this to full so there you have it we are now DC coupled at 50 millivolts per division Again, this will give us one amp per division and I've just got the current clamp set right over the top of our ground wire we'll go ahead and set the probes offset voltage get us somewhere around the center again we're going to leave our meter set to the millivolt AC mode so here comes our charge well, it's right off the screen and here's our discharge let's try it again here's our charge and here's our discharge so this is again one amp per division and we're right off the screen again this is a hundred nanosecond per division so you can see our peak currents on this are well over four amps so yeah so I guess I'm not too surprised by that because all these mobs are going to have a certain amount of capacitance to them and of course their common point is right to the common of the meter so they have the lowest impedance path to our probes so it could very well be that that parasitic capacitance is what's causing this so my point to all this is it may not be so cut and dry where if you're using a particular meter on a certain circuit that it may cause a failure but another meter may not cause that same problem so I would suggest any time that you're using the AC modes you always discharge the meter before you connect the probes to your next circuit basically all you're doing is making sure that you're discharging that internal capacitor so I think that's going to be all for this video again hopefully pretty soon we'll be looking at that Unity UT61E plus until then stay safe and we'll catch you on the next video later